So here's my idea for my bobblehead. This is my inspiration. It's going to be a version of this fox. So again, you take inspiration from things that you see around you and you can add your own influence or add your own details to that reference picture. So what I need to do is I need to make two pieces for this bobblehead to actually work. The first one is going to be a pinch pot that is upside down that is going to serve as the head and then I need to make a base. But a couple things that I have to remember when making the base is number one, I have to make sure that this neck part is not only tall enough so that when I put my head on top of this part, it has room to wobble. But it also wants to make sure that when you put the head on top of the base, it doesn't knock into any pieces that you've added. For example, my tail. So this is a side view of my base. The other thing that you have to remember is that when you're making your base, this top of the cone has to be round because if this part is flat, your head will just sit flat on that flat base and it won't bobble at all. For this project, you need a paper clip and a piece of clay about the size of an orange. Round that into a ball. Now what I'm gonna do is separate one third of the ball. I'm going to take the two thirds and put that back into the bag so that it doesn't dry out while I'm working on the head, which is going to become the pinch pot. Now let's take a look at our at home tools, a straight pin and a paper clip taped to the top of pencils or plastic cutlery. If you're in the classroom, you're going to use a small loop tool, a large loop tool, a needle tool and a fettling knife. In addition to the tools, you will need one paper clip. Now you have the head pinch pot finished. Now we're gonna start making the body. We wanna make sure we have a cone shape with a flattened bottom. We also wanna make sure that the top of the cone is rounded so that in case you don't have a paper clip to use for your bobble head, you can actually just set your pinch pot right on top of your body and it will wobble a little bit. Now before we start adding any of our decorations, we are going to make sure that our bobble mechanism is added. We're going to take an additional small piece of clay, we're going to slip and score that to the bottom or the inside of your pinch pot. I'm using a pencil but you can use a needle tool to just make a hole where the top of the paper clip spring is going to be added for the head and a hole in the base where the paper clip spring is going to be added on the bottom. An easy way to make your spring is to take your paper clip and wrap it around a pencil. Make sure that both the top and the bottom of that paper clip are still straight so that they can be glued into the head and glued into the body to make your bobble head wobble later. Now you can check to make sure that your spring is the right size. I would put the longer piece into the base and the shorter straight piece into the head. You want to make sure that the head is not too tall or not too short on the body. Now I'm taking additional pieces of clay to start adding the legs onto my fox. I want to make sure that I'm slipping and scoring properly because we all know that when clay dries it shrinks. If the clay is not slipped and scored properly, all the pieces will dry separately and they will detach from each other. Now I'm going to add that white patch of fur onto the top of my legs and my base so that it looks a little bit more three-dimensional. I can take a Crayola marker to use as a rolling pin if I'm at home. Remember when you're adding decorations, the clay can be very thin because we don't want to add too much additional weight. The patch of fur that I'm going to be adding right now is just a rough outline. I'm going to go and refine all of those details later. When you're working in small spaces, water and a paintbrush are going to be very helpful. You can also use toothpicks if you're at home and you don't have a needle tool. Now that I'm done with the front, I'm going to start working on my side legs. Please again make sure that you are slipping and scoring to make sure that those legs also do not fall off. 
Now that both of your legs are added on both sides, you can go ahead and start adding a little bit of those details. The last part to add now onto the body is the tail. Just like in the rattle video, I don't want my fox's head to be flat. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a small piece of clay and add it onto the front of my pinch pot to make it look as though his nose is coming forward. Now that I've added my eyes, I wanna make sure that they stay put by blending the edges of the eye right into the face. This will also allow your sculpture to look as though the eyes are part of the face, not just sitting on top of it. I've added my eyebrows, my nose, and that little tuft of hair on the top of its head. I'm taking the edge of the pinch pot and making it into more of a point. I'm not adding any additional clay, I'm just taking the edge and pinching it out. Because I want both of my ears to be very similar in shape and size, I cut out one ear already and I'm rolling out a second piece of clay to make sure that they are the same thickness. I'm gonna take my first ear, put it on top of my second mini slab and trace that ear to make sure it's the same size. It's always gonna be easier to draw any intricate designs on a piece of clay that's flat versus slipping and scoring those ears onto the head and doing that design later. I always suggest taking a tiny little coil and wrapping it around any piece that you think is likely to fall over due to gravity. Remember that you are gonna blend in that coil so no one will even know that it ever existed. It will although give your piece a lot more strength than it would have had on its own. Now here's where a steady hand will really benefit you. You're gonna take your needle tool and start carving in the outline of your eyeballs. But again, anytime you cut into clay, you're gonna have a little bit of scrap. So take a paintbrush and just paint those little crumbs away. If you keep dipping your tool in the water, that will also help your tool glide through the clay versus rip it. Just like I added additional clay onto the face, I thought that the bottom lip needed a little bit more of a 3D effect. So I added a coil at the bottom so that it looked as though the mouth was open. Now I'm just adding some finishing touches by cleaning up some of those lines that got a little bit smeared as I was working. Now that our head and body is sculpted, we wanna go back and make sure that we take our time and smooth out any score marks that we didn't want. I felt like the fox needed a little bit more texture. So what I'm doing is taking my needle tool and making small hairs, trying to pay attention to the direction that the hair would naturally fall on the fox's body. So I finished making all the hair on the body. If you are using earthenware clay, you want to make sure that you hollow out the inside of your body. If you're using the air dry clay, you can actually leave it as a solid piece. I should mention that the hollowing out should be done after all pieces are attached. Otherwise, you will collapse your structure if you press too hard. Now what we're going to do is we are now going to add a little bit of tacky glue onto our paper clip. You have to cut the top part of the tacky glue if it's the first time you're using it. I'll show you one more time how to make your spring. You take a normal paper clip and make sure that you stretch it out as straight as possible. You're then going to take a pencil or a colored pencil and start by wrapping the end around the pencil until you form a coil or a spring using the whole paper clip. It might be a little bit tough, so just go slow. I should mention that any glue would actually work just fine. Elmer's glue or white school glue would be perfect. They just might take a little bit longer to dry. Just make sure after you've taken it off the pencil that the top and the bottom are going straight up and down. 
This sculpture was created using air dry clay. So for this one, we can use either acrylic or watercolor paint. You can see that the head is definitely drier than the body is by the white color. So we are painting this with the acrylic paint right now. If you were using earthenware clay, you would definitely want to use underglaze or gloss glaze once your piece is fired. Using a pencil, I drew a line where I wanted to make sure that I stopped painting the orange. This will allow me to leave that bottom half of the face white. Remember to paint the bottom of your pinch pot as well. Now the head and the body are painted and dried. Now it's time to assemble your bobblehead. You're gonna take that spring, put a little bit of glue at the top of the spring, and we are gonna attach the head first. Put the top of the spring into that hole that we made with our pencil, and we're gonna fill it with a lot of glue. So now we're gonna go ahead and put a little bit of glue into the bottom part of the spring. And we're going to put that upside down right onto the base. You can see that it's already bobbling a little bit. Unfortunately, there were two little parts that paint may have been a little bit too wet still. So we're gonna to touch that up. And there you go. There's your bobblehead. I hope all the steps were nice and clear for you to be able to follow. If you have any questions, please make sure you just let me know.